No, I grew up Jehovah's Witness and like all no those kids. Way. That's crazier. worse. Yeah. That's worse. Yeah. I mean, I was, I'm like one generation removed. So I wasn't like fully invested oh, in okay. it like my parents were. But did like they got to, kicked out the church for like. You have to you knock know, on any doors? I used to love that shit. Wow. Ah. I used to love. It's like, because they send the cute ass kid in there. I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm like, I just like talking to the people. Day 93 under the dome. With necessities growing dangerously low, who knows what spark will set off this powder keg. I can't take another minute in this dome! First of its kind, the first dome, anywhere. Anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. Okay, fine, I'll put on the glasses. We are <laughs> rocking and rolling. We got very special guests in the house. Hope Messiah, Messiah for president. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior, <laughs> Messiah Carey over here. He had to get the second coming for episode 200. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Number 200. Uh, it's it's twice as... Has anyone ever lived to be 100 other than in Bible times? I think there's plenty of I mean, of 200. People. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I meant to say. Order Sorry. Folks, this is Dome, the number one greatest comedy freestyle rap podcast in the world. I'm Alex. Across from me is David, per usual. And, uh, you know, if you like what you hear on this episode... Log on over to patreon.com slash dome with Bampamania. And uh, we got full episodes that you guys haven't heard over there. One a week for you friggin' monsters. Nice. And we'll send uh, you some stickers if you sign up. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe, leave a comment. Or on the audio platforms, also review, rate, all that shit. But yeah, we got uh, M- Messiah over here rolling fr- like something that he straight up pulled off of a tree this morning. <laughs> what the heck? You, so you get your leaf in a bag. Can, can you pull that out again and show the, the camera here? Like, what is this? Grab a leaf. Grab a leaf. The best way to smoke. It's a whole leaf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It's a it, literal leaf. And and it kind of reminds me of like, uh, actually, you know what? Let's. You're gonna need to eat this yeah, mic get just the a mic, little bit. Get, get the that, mic get that nice up. and pointed at you too. Let's if you do can. It. Maybe like. Right. Nope, I'm in there. All right, hell yeah. Um, this uh, is some fucking real shit right here. I might dude. puke every now. And <laughs> I swear, just like, don't don't hit it too hard. <laughs> like, just hit it like a normal person. Cigar. Sometimes, like backwoods, I've puked off the backwood before, um, oh. just because of the leaf and how much you know tobacco's in that leaf. But uh, that's just because I'm a fucking white boy pussy ass. Yeah, you do look bitch. like a very earthy person, like very all natural. I'm weak. I'm weak with the weed. I always, I've said this a million times, but even yesterday, I hit a weed pen that my girl had. And by three hours later, I was fucking eating Oreos and, and getting all crazy. <laughs> the pens are different. That shit Slept is... like a baby, though. Put it right out. Have you had the peanut butter Oreos? Oh, yeah. Those are so good. Bro. It's th- poverty. Bro, you know what's crazy is that um, <laughs> that shit has, it, my girl gets the gluten-free ones, and they're double stuffed. I thought they were all gluten-free. No, no, no. The They're vegan. Oh, But you got to get the is. gluten-free ones if you want them to be gluten-free, and... The double stuff Oreos that are gluten free, two of them is 140 calories. Eat six of them, bitches. You're doing damage. <laughs> if you're trying to lose some weight, Oreos are probably not great. A thing to incorporate in your dietary uh, guidelines, babe. I'm counting calories like I count my salary. Yeah, I need some Oreos. Yeah, I need that white cream. Mm, that's how it is. Yeah, it's a fucking dream, bruh. You know, I love it and I eat them every night, cuz. Two dudes, one bitch, that's an Oreo. You know how the story goes. Oh, I'm just saying it's black. Hold on, wait, that's not how I rap. Yeah, you know my Oreos, they stay gluten free. But when they inside of me, I feel uh, digestively some discomfort. Yeah, but I also ate Oreos for the comfort. Yeah, I eat these Oreos because they're healthy. Don't ask me how many. They might be like, <laughs> mm, maybe several. Uh, just one or two, not a whole sleeve. <laughs> not a whole sleeve. Bro, what's funny is that I'll grab like four. Just made a banger in like two seconds. <laughs> I'll grab like four and be like, all right, four is good. But then a couple hours later, I might grab another four. And at that yeah. point, I'm doing numbers. Uh, no, nah, if I buy a pack, I'm fucking them all up. It's the whole not, pack? I'm committing to the... You, you see the gut. Bro, it's I'm it's hard. It's just pack. it's one of those things where it's easier to just not eat them. Like, if I want to eat Oreos, if I can hold back and not do it, it's easier than eating just two Oreos. You, you know what the issue is? It's the packaging. Like, the Oreo... It, the package of Oreo, it's, it's uh, you know, it's like three rows of, like what 20 oreos or something like that no not even it's like 10 three rows of 10 oreos they should make it five rows 
of <laughs> oh five yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's like serving <laughs> it's like serving people on a smaller yeah, plate because mm. i swear there's something happens in your brain where you're like i'm just gonna have the one sleeve i'm just gonna have the one <laughs> row you know what i mean it's like when that i go to the true. when i go to the store and i buy cheetos i'll buy like two of the little 50 cent bags mm. instead of the one big bag and then it feels like i ate two bags of chips but i'm eating less technically it's just Hard to put a bag away. Cheetos just redesigned their packaging. Have you guys been seeing that? No. Cheetos is cancer, yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Cheetos is you don't, cancer. You don't eat Cheetos? No, nah, not Cheetos. I eat Fritos, though, which is okay, no okay. better. Same thing. <laughs> which is no better. I was going to say, I've got a bag of the XX Extra Flamin' Hots in the oh, room it's... right now that have been fucking up my mornings pretty the, significantly. The porn uh, Cheetos. With coffee? Ew. <laughs> well, the coffee no, helps no. because then, you know, the pain from the whatever capsaicin that's in those Oreo, or Oreos. Cheetos, Cheetos. How about this? Oreo Cheetos. Ugh, That'll that's happen. So that's not good. That's not good. But would it be? I assume it would have to be because Oreo is the one that does all the crazy flavors. If it's deep fried and at a fair, I might fuck with it. Yeah, no, I've heard about that. I've never mm. done it though. It, it would have to be a savory Cheeto cookie. So you I do Cheetos on the side, like outside Cheeto cookie, mm. and then inside it's cheese. Have y'all ever done like the oh, chili shit. cheese Cheetos? Oh, chili cheese Cheetos. I haven't done that. That shit is a, a hood classic. Chili. Oh, Chili yeah. In, in the, the bag. bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. It's And it's like friggin' cheap as hell, too. Um, it, it looks like the, the shit switched over to the to the Nintendo Switch. Is that no, the no, issue, No, no. That's, that's the channel that it's on. Should I fix it real quick, or should we just say fuck it? Uh, maybe yeah, we could just turn it off. How about that? So it's not like friggin' like yeah. the TV, I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Technical Dude. difficulties. So uh, I met Messiah at an open mic yes, you know, like sir. three or four weeks ago, back when um, uh, Rowdy Fingers and Jack Bidler were in the building. They shut that shit down. Too. Yeah, they they were among the best performers that evening, I, I would say. Uh, and and I, I enjoyed all the performances. We went to an open mic the next night that was fucking mm. god awful. <laughs> Bro, but we talked about it. It was, it was bad. Tell me, tell me this. Were you there for the guy that performed Royals by Lord? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never be Royals. Yeah. Royals. You, was, you wasn't fucking with that? Uh, oh. hmm. <laughs> you know what? He was, he was hosting the whole night, too, so I will say this. He was a good host. <laughs> Actually, now that I said it out loud, maybe as a host, he shouldn't be proud. He got... <laughs> This one chick's name writing the name wrong. She was the writing junkie, but he, she called yeah. him the writing monkey. That Damn, was black. it's hard to host. I don't do it the most great, but usually I'm late to the open mic and it's done by the time I arrive. Yo, why the host always fucking up the homie's name? Keep it cool when I don't complain. Next time I'ma run the stage. Honestly, <laughs> I'm just not even saying the word monkey. If I'm out there playing, that's just something that you yeah. won't catch me ever doing. Please get me off this stage. Yeah. Don't, don't ever call me a chunky monkey. No, <laughs> it's not gonna be funky. Nah, yeah, uh, I don't even acknowledge the existence of apes. <laughs> I hate their whole race. Damn. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, that was uh, when that happened. I was like, "Whoa, you that's about to have another walk off." <laughs> that <is> insane. <laughs> Damn, dude, he he did his research. <laughs> I I at first I thought she said it pretty clearly too. It, so it happens I was, consistently. That's, yeah. that's the homie. Shout out Magdalena. That yeah. They oh damn. So you know what's okay. You you're you're aware of them specifically. <laughs> yeah. Right. They, no. They fuck it up. <laughs> damn. It's the the open mic is such a rough experience. I, part of it is. The, the issue with the Royal song, if you're going to convert a, a corny pop song into like an emotional play it on the guitar, like slow thing, it, I don't think that's it has to be done very well. You think that song is corny? It's just once you start playing it on the guitar, slow and shit, okay. it becomes okay. corny. Anytime okay. you do have an acoustic cover of any song, it's it's like it's corny. You have to make it not corny. Exactly. You know what True. I mean? True. So True. that. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's also um, it's. It seems like covering a song that that was that huge or whatever, mine might not be the best idea at the end of the day at an open mic. It has to be done really well. Like there's this. Some dude. people smoke it. Usually the niggas with the guitars are usually like the standouts of the night. Yeah, but they have to be really good at playing the guitar. Yeah, no, I mean not even necessarily if the voice is better. Okay, but if the uh, voice is good. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I do have smoke for you though, off of previous episodes. Okay. Oh boy, here we go. Here Give we us go. the dirt, bro. I don't like how you be talking about open mics, man. Oh, <laughs> it's probably me. I've said it. No, I'm, I'm like out and about. Like that, I, is, I, that is the lifestyle. So I, like, I swear. Damn. Well, here's the thing. We've done a few, and we have. We still do them every now and then too. It's one of those things where it's, it's. It's like just that's the struggle, you know. It's a rite of passage. <laughs> you're you're, you're yeah, talking about you hate it, but you still participate mm-hmm. in it constantly well, or for, whatever. A big part of, of it for me is the Los Angeles scene is very full of shit, and then a lot of these mics, they're, 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 they can be like they're just a business. Usually, we're talking about comedy open mics too. Which yeah, yeah, a lot is, comedy and, and those are worse. Comedy yeah, and music. To- yeah, yeah. I so I I do have to make the distinction and say. It's also because enduring a lot of mediocre shit and often comedy is it can be more bad than music. Usually people who are at open mic, they have some musical inclination. There's and gonna, at, the, at a comedy open mic, 90% of them are going to be cringe. 5% are going to be okay. And then there's going to be another five that are actually really good. So it's, it's kind of a bummer. And, and all the whole audience is all comedians too. Yeah. So what's, why do you go to the open mics? Like, it, cause here's my thing. You don't have to go to open mics to become a better artist. Like for me, when I, when I think I about like, okay, let me just finish my point real quick. When I, when I think about my artist journey, um, I think about improving my production ability, improving my writing, improving my uh, mixing, mastering, like improving the process of songwriting from start to finish. I, I have performed before many times. So like I've gotten stage time um, and I feel like m- performing is a skill that if you do get the chance to eventually be on like a, a small tour or something like that, you'll pick up on performing quickly. And I also mm-hmm. fucking do this show and all this shit. But why do you think open mics are such an important part of your thing? I, I would say for getting the stage reps and like the, I feel like it's like my form of artist development in a way is just like going and getting really comfortable on stage because I get hella nervous before oh, shows. Got it. Still, like I could know I could practice all week, but just the nerves and the more I do it, the less. I mean, the nerves are still there, but it's like embracing the nerves and you know you know what gives you a lot of confidence having fucking banging ass songs that is true i that's that's my in that's, my head and rapping over your own audio your own lyrics on, on audio Fuck that, dude. my one of my biggest <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of my I biggest things i always was very proud of the fact that i knew all of my lyrics perfectly i fucking hit them on point and like that's and, rare nowadays and too. if i and if i believed in the music then i could confidently get out there and be like fucking doing it i think <laughs> It's self-serving most of the time These dudes just want a little time To stand on stage and blind <laughs> Blind people with the music, yeah, it's fine Yeah, you know that I'm so great That's hey. why I showed up today So I'ma need your attention Please listen, the words are important Hey, listen to me Please hey. I'm kicking a free hey. Oh, please listen to me hey. You bitch and I see uh. Stop tripping on me Stop tripping. Hey. Hey, <laughs> stop tripping, please. I'm on stage. Yeah, we gotta get on the same page. Uh, I've been going all damn day, and it's late. Gotta go to bed with my bae. Hey, wrote the song for my dad. Everyone, please listen, or you're bad. Yo, <laughs> the lyrics are really tight, so I need everyone to be quiet tonight and listen up and gauge your ears because these are some lyrics that you really gotta hear, bitch. Yeah, like that's that's my favorite uh, rapper at an open mic who like tells yeah. tells people to really listen to the lyrics. Yo, this, <laughs> this, dad, this, this next one's this about my dad. my brother, and I really want you guys to pay attention to the words, man. This song is about an important time in my life and the struggle I went through. And the <laughs> words are really important. Man. I need you guys to listen to the lyrics. Like I was constipated on Tuesday. And I wrote this. <laughs> this song's about my dog Poodles who recently passed. I really want you guys to pay attention to the lyrics, man. <laughs> That was his name, Poodles. <laughs> he was the best shooter in Atlanta. It's it, it's often self-serving. It's people being like, give me attention and all this shit, and they're not. I, I think it's important for people to have a space to fucking you know, perform and do their thing. You know what was funny is the open mic that I met Messiah at actually had some artistry to it, and I didn't get the vibe that people were there. There were a couple of self-serving sure. performances but for the most part, I got the vibe that people were there to try and get their art out there more. Mm-hmm. 
the very the following night we went to an open mic at D Piazza's Pizza and or no it's not a pizza place I keep saying it's, it's, just, uh, it's, it's just D Piazza's it's just okay. D Piazza's do they serve pizza? And, nope they <laughs> don't serve pizza they do they do serve a trash open mic on on Tuesdays it's a good it's a good music venue like they have real shows that are good but apparently this mic was not a good experience. yeah it was that it was I would say there was no one there that. Uh, other than the, the two dudes that I was hanging with at the open mic that uh, I met you at, it was no talent whatsoever. Music ones tend to be a little bit like worse, <laughs> in my opinion, because I be fucking with the poetry ones a lot. Like I, that's more. No, we my used bag. to do that, bro. You guys used to write poetry? No, we used to go do rap. I mean, I, yeah, we would write originals, but not. It's not like poetry. It's like sli- slam we, we poetry. Would, we would kind of take our rap songs and just. Turn it's them a, into spoken words, but you guys are very lyrical like too. That. Like the, the the pen be pendant, so I could see it like translate. We definitely we definitely try. Also at the time, I remember like writing shit about girls and then inviting them to the mic Ooh. and then performing <laughs> it in front of them and then being like, oh yeah, and then, uh, like it was, did you tell them though, like yo, this is for you? Oh yeah, I'd be like, hey, I'm gonna do a thing about you tonight. You should come through, and then it, oh yeah, and then they do that a few times, and then people would be like, because dude, there was a couple ones that I did where like. I would like I would have a good performance like people in the crowd would be reacting to shit that I would say a lot of it's self-deprecating too, like about me being fat or Arab and stuff like that. But (laughs) it would hit. And then them sitting there watching you do well. That is the most narcissistic feeling of joy that you can get. (laughs) You're like, I'm the man. And she's watching me be the man. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's so goofy. I mean, I did. uh, It was a good place for us to, I think. uh, We did it at a hookah lounge. So also imagine everyone just smoking the the biggest vape that you've ever seen in your life. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone is vaped out in that room. Yeah. So, you know, (laughs) hookah lounges are insane. I can't believe I ever frequented them. And there's no booze there. Like you could only right, smoke tobacco and cigarettes. Got to sneak it in. Yeah, I mean, you probably. Did I feel that like a toward, or, I, there are bars everywhere, so you get fucked up and then go to the. I lounge. think that towards sure. the end of our tenure in Grand Rapids, they started selling booze at that hookah lounge. Makes sense. That, there's a lot of them here that do that. They sell. There's also like there's one in uh, Long Beach that's like. I think more underground, or maybe it's not underground, and I'm just making that shit up. The, the thought makes me want to vomit. <laughs> the, the hookah lounge? Yeah, they're just, they're, uh, I'm picturing putting that giant rod in my mouth <laughs> and, you know, and just <laughs> sucking, <laughs> sucking hard. And, and, uh, <laughs> uh, like, it is rough times. Like, no it's, diddy, it's no like diddy. cold. <laughs> <laughs> what about your what about your music like are you on spotify and stuff like that no no not, not at all i'm just building a catalog right now and enjoying the process i notice you're pretty low-key on on it uh in general for the How old most are you? part um, i'm 24 okay you got you're young <laughs> so, yeah you got, you got some time. <laughs> yeah um, no i know you, you you like the business mind i'm like i was yeah you're gonna well i i'm trying to do it on my, myself so i i'm always interested when other artists come on i'm like what are you doing and he's like twice your age so it's time, <laughs> time is of the essence <laughs> uh i'm a old ass motherfucking rapper kill a mic in this bitch fucking dap up pull up with the snares on the shit with the high hats you know i'm feeling great my guy uh Pull up and drinking a Mai Tai, yeah. feeling so damn fly. I'm geriatric, that's a fact, bitch. <laughs> Over here, yeah, I'm not acting. I got that mm, arthritis, so Whoa. I can't fucking write shit. I can only freestyle right now. I'm an old man, and you know I write down every single thing, so I don't forget it later. I got dementia, don't be a hater. <laughs> uh. I'm not old, but a old soul. Need Whoa. no pro mode. Take a photo, save me in my slow mode. <laughs> Bitch, I'm slow as hell. Slow as hell. It's still going well. Going well. Pull up at the show and tell. Bitch. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> we got through that. We're cooking. We're cooking. Fuck yeah. Uh I was kind I had to prepare twice today because we, we got another show that we're doing also. So I just went through fucking 30 beats <laughs> nice. trying to figure out what to do. But uh at the end of the day, it's there's a it you should play it safe and just throw in boom bap like that's my backup i'm like anybody can just go on some boom bap do you fuck with some boom bap yeah boom bap is like my preferred way to go usually i listen to people's music before i talk to them so i wasn't able to i should have maybe dug a little bit deeper but um what's your style uh lyrical as hell (laughs) like just just like multis on multis 
but I feel like I like adding like a little comedic aspect. But you gotta, the, yeah, got to. But like with depth behind it too. Like I'm like joking about some serious shit, like tastefully though. It's hard to make serious music. It's like I, irony, it, you know. It just feels weird. Like I'm like I, I don't think people will accept it as much. Like you know, it's ironic because a lot of times I, I connect with serious music because it amps me up. So every now and then I'll be like, "Fuck it, dude, just do something serious." And if it doesn't, because I'm in the I'm in the like just drop singles kind of mode. So I think that's it, the best way to be. If honest. something if something is a hit is a miss, I'm just like, "Well, let it just go into the. Ethan. It'll drop to the bottom of the Spotify, mm-hmm. and then the good ones will just be at the top, and then I just keep kind of running." You're saying that. that you you put a little nuance in your in your narration when you're whenever you're writing a song. Absolutely, I do. I do feel like nuance is something that people do not. Like I think the part of people's brains that understood nuance is like the first thing to go mm. when you spend all your day on TikTok, oh, like, yeah. and shit like that because. I don't know. It just seems like people aren't willing to ever understand the context. Mm-hmm. They just see a surface level thing, and that's their first assessment, and that's the only thing that they see. Also, how often are people listening to stuff and not doing something else simultaneously? Like, I feel like that's true. Every now and then, I'll be like, hit play on a song, and I'll sit like this, and that feels insane. Like, how often are you listening to music? That is insane. Exclusively. So yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I see somebody at a grocery store standing in line and they're not looking at their phone, I'm like, that dude's a murderer. I'm only like, <laughs> I'm only like that when a new Hobson song comes out. Like, yeah. All right. I yeah. got, I got to listen to this. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I sang my pants. <laughs> oh my oh, that, that was an I mean, area. That's, that's a deep cut. Bro, yeah. I, I showed uh, Rowdy and Jack. Um, happy, happy ending. ending. <laughs> happy, happy ending is. The most insane music video. You know what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, made, dude. I, and it's the production value of that music video he is was so, so high. He was so pissed when he they was, took it down. He was so bummed <laughs> when he found out that you're not allowed to be racist towards the <laughs> Asians. <laughs> like, first of all, he, he kept calling it an Asian massage. Like he yeah. never once <laughs> spe- yeah, yeah. specified any ethnicity really. Which- but is there not a difference? <laughs> well, it, you never go to a massage parlor, at least not in LA, and it's some white lady. It's always gonna be yeah. It's no, man, always man, gonna be Asians. It. Like he's not wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's what it is. We love them though. We love them. Though. Yeah, no massage parlors. It's, it's wild that you can. Uh, what's it called? Rub maps. Is Rub the, maps. It, it's what? Is what? That? That's where you. That's Bro. where you find out which massage parlors are down with the happy ending. I'll go on Rub Maps right now. You still gotta be. Sus- Please show me what that well, looks it's, for uh, research. We'll look- <laughs> <laughs> for my own independent yeah, research. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, there's there's a there's one um, within like walking distance. No, yeah, I I I've, I've been to one down the street. Not to not. It's not walking distance, but it's. It, you would, still gotta be suspicious, bro. Would you guys like spend? I mean, if you were single, would you spend spend that money on that massage? It's tough because you could just jerk off and kind yeah. of get it over with. So most, you know, it's not the same. It's not it the, the same. <laughs> but I also, I'm I'm pretty sure that the ladies here are like all like 55. Yeah, and, no, uh, you gotta find one where the chicks <laughs> I mean, are hot. You're not but here's the here's back. the other thing. <laughs> <You're right>. When you <laughs> Can I lie on my stomach and put it through like a hole in the table? Like I'd be down with that. Once you start thinking concern. about it and you're like, this chick doesn't want to do this. Oh god. Once you start <laughs> thinking about the fact uh, that this bitch probably was tra- trafficked yep. from a different plant, plant in Vietnam. Yeah, it's not the best. Yo, don't think about that. I'm at the <laughs> lucky massage man over there at 5465 Cherry in Long Beach. I'm gonna go over there and get my dong leaked. Damn, you plug with the address. I've been having bad sex. No. So I'm gonna go and hit the mattress. Hey, she gonna rub all me. Pull up to the massage parlor, find a nice girl, and then I start to holler. Uh, gotta wear a collar. <laughs> Call her a bitch, yeah, smarter. I'm at the Rainbow Massage at 3316 <laughs> East Anaheim Street out there in Long Beach, yeah. I'm about to go, go get my wiener touched, yeah. Ooh, I hope that it doesn't cost too much. Dang, the secret sponsor, yo, who do? Bro. <laughs> yeah, we got a whole, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, What's funny is that you gotta pay to read the reviews on Rubmap. You can go on Google and find <laughs> some that have the dudes in the, in the messages being like, 
oh, Stacy's good, this and that. And then there'll be a random white lady in there that's like, this massage parlor sucks. Yeah. <laughs> because they're not real masseuses. Yeah, like somebody like, went to get a real massage and then they're like, this massage place is trash. Right. <laughs> one, of, one of the things that they have on their site on all of the locations is whether or not they uh, have s- <coughs> semi truck parking. Damn, dude. Because, what does that mean? Because, it, the, it, because drivers. Because semi, stop. yeah, semi trucks drivers love whores, man. Oh. <laughs> it's a it's a thing like a like a what's it called a a lot, lot a lot lizard. lizard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's common for the the truckers to they're lonely. They're out on the road. They got to get some love too. Some of these are like obviously. Uh, like Lucky Massage, the first one I talk about. Of oh, course, yeah, you're yeah. gonna get jerked off yeah, of there. Course. There's one here called um, <laughs> Lucky Massage. This, this one's called Wood Massage. Damn, literally Damn. called <laughs> Wood <laughs> Massage at 1020 East Pacific Coast <laughs> Highway in Long Beach. Uh, only 50 an hour, folks. Now, uh, exactly who's getting that, jerked but... off for more than an hour? <laughs> I'm not gonna find a better one than Wood Massage. No, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's insane. <laughs> Bro, they got to just legalize this shit because if it was legal, it'd be like you wouldn't feel weird about like doing it. You know what I'm saying? You're not legal. And I might have to take back what I said about Hobson because they also specify ethnicity on this um, on this rub maps. And oh, yeah, it'll be like Cantonese. No, they just say Asian. Oh, Oh. yeah, I swear. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to another one. What's the other option? I think I've seen like it says Chinese or Vietnamese. Oh, you're right. Well, this one says Asian and Chinese. They're both listed. (laughs) They're covering the full (laughs) Asian, Caucasian, and Chinese. No, there's no Caucasians there. I promise you. (laughs) Well, they're they're not the ones being sex trafficked. (laughs) Such a bummer. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If it was legal to get a happy ending and these chicks were just like, you know, they're 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 there. They have health insurance, stuff like that. Then I'm pulling up, not feeling bad at all. They got health insurance. And then you don't got to be all weird about it when you get there. Like, you got to go there. And then when they tell you to get under the towel, you got to take your boxers off. And then you got to leave cash, like insinuating cash here on the table. And then by the end of it, she's like. Dude. Doesn't he sound so experienced? I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> it's, all, um, it's, 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 you know, you, would, know you'd be surprised. <laughs> I read some forums. <laughs> It's stressful, bro. I, I mean, I haven't done this in a long time, but you like it's not implied. They're like trying to suss you out, too. And I'm sure half of the time they're like, I hope this guy doesn't want a hand job. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel I, I'm at a point now where it's not I'm also in a relationship, but it's also I can't go there and not feel bad for her. I used to be or I also Very used to go when I was fucked up. But if, if you go get a fucking whore or a hand job sober. <laughs> that's that's a tough mental game understand. you have to play with yourself. Has that does, has anyone ever visited a whore sober? Like, I feel like that's <laughs> oh, there's some dudes who are just like, yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get it. I guess yes, yeah, sober dudes. Like they <laughs> they met them, <laughs> yeah, they the, met them when they, the, the heat. They're out there. It <laughs> wouldn't. Be, it, that's what I'm saying. These dudes should be able to get whores sober and not have to be sus. Like there should just be a whore store. On the corner, mm, on fourth. the corner, <laughs> the four. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, imagine if there was just a horror store and you just pull up. You're well, like, they used to have oh, Instagram. Well, that yeah. was. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's kind of like, I mean, if you're an attractive man over six foot, that's what like, like ten, Tinder and and fucking <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, yeah. and Hinge are basically. Yeah. Just, oh, are you guys on dating apps? I got hella every now stories. and then. I'm on the like every six months. I'll go on the dating app just to just to prove to myself mm. that I still have it to a degree. Mm. And then, you know, I'll, I'll have a few experiences and then I'm like, all right, swearing off that for another six months. And then <laughs> it was, it's actually been over six months now at this point. I should probably try to get back I, I on. I think about getting <laughs> back on. <laughs> you re- you've, been, you've been working out. I think you probably get some new pictures. Oh yeah, dude. I could start, get, get the flex going. Oh uh, yeah. You could, the, you could do the Gerard Carmichael and just do the picture of the, of the belly. Oh yeah. I could do like, uh, I could do my own pregnancy photos, but <laughs> it, it's just about how I'm hot now and how I, I used to be skinny and, yeah. and gangly. <laughs> the review. What about you? You on the apps? Yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how you doing oh, on there? Mo- you, multiple. You closing? Closing some? Closing some ladies? <laughs> Coffees I'm, for closers. I'm, I'm I'm taking a break now because I have an incident. Oh. oh. I had an incident. It was fucked up. No coincidence. I'm mad. I had to witness it. God damn. Yo, sometimes you can get caught up in the apps And that's it, I think I'd rather stay home and fap Than go and meet these girls every night Because it almost always ends in a fight Yo, let me guess about your incident 
You pulled up and it wasn't a bitch. <laughs> it was some dude with a full clip. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, what's up, kid? Thought I was going to a house to meet somebody with take old bitty. Grown man came out, it was Diddy. Damn. Oh shit, I had to run. Hit the corner and it wasn't really fun. Nah. It wasn't really fun. No fun. Not exactly. No <laughs> there, there was a uh, niggas in. So it was a house in the middle. It was two niggas and wife beaters on the porch on one side and then on the opposite side. So that, I count four niggas. I look up down the <laughs> sidewalk. It's like a bad burger play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see two more walking up, and then I'm like, mm, "This is like everybody's in wife beaters, and it's not hot. It's not a good sign." Yeah. And then like I look up, and there's just a nigga chilling in a tree, and so I just literally ran. Oh, because you were on foot. <laughs> I was on foot. I, I walked over. It was just in the neighborhood. Do you, do you have a, a photo of the of the lady that you matched with? I would never. <laughs> I just, I, this is not for me to judge. I, well, I guess I would be kind of. I just want to. I want to know. I just want to take a look at her and be like, does she look like she might have a bunch of dudes who are trying to jump me? Or it's just a picture like, of Mia Khalifa. <laughs> yeah. <is> clearly catfishing. <laughs> oh, and he's like, oh yeah, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pull up. It's just dudes. No. <laughs> it, it definitely wasn't worth it, and she did look gang affiliated. So, oh, <laughs> face tats and stuff like that. No, but not face tats, but the tats with like the red ink and then the Dude, I would I would love to just red fucking, in all pictures. Anytime get. anytime you see the colored ink, that that's gotta be a red flag. Red ink. If it's like a koi fish or Chinese letters, then yeah. Well, I I, don't, I just I think that like colored ink almost never looks good in any context. Even even like on the whitest skin where you could see it as clear as possible, I think it just just the the regular black tattoo. I it's because white people get ugly that. tattoos. Like That's they could true. really like yeah. take advantage of like, I mean, the color spectrum. There's some super insane color tattoos nowadays. They're they're almost too much. It's like your leg looks like a fucking dragon or some yep. shit, and it's like cost you fucking ten thousand dollars. Have but you seen that style where it's like it, it's almost embroidery? So it looks like it's stitched in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's not even. I don't think it's tattooing. It's something else. It's um. No, I think that is tattooing. It's just they, they they're so good at the art they can make it look three dimensional. Yeah, they gotta call something different. Oh, I thought I thought it was what <laughs> you were talking about. It's like you have a bump on your skin at the end of it. It's like a scar almost. There is like no scarification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scarification is insane. That I don't know no if you've sense. seen that shit where they're like literally. Taking a blade to and, <laughs> and drawing some shit in or you. Or even like the college people, they get like the branded shit. The brand is crazy as well. Yeah. And and I know that that like it, you have to get lucky for that stuff to heal well. Like yeah, I've seen a lot of fucked up. the scarification like can heal weird because each like your body creates scars differently. Sometimes like if you get a deep cut and and you've got some weird body chemistry, your your scar is going to be some weird like purple lump or some shit. Yeah, and no, then exactly. other people, like the scar comes out as like skin color uh and you can sort of it's like you can just barely tell that there's a blemish. Well, it's something. like if you don't take care of your tattoos, they're going to heal weird sometimes. I mean, mo it'll be fine most likely, but you can that's fuck some up. dirty ass nigga that can't take care of a tattoo. Bro, that's me. That's <laughs> why I don't get tattoos. Because <laughs> I, I would be that guy who didn't who didn't put the cream on, and the next day I've got my tattoo falling off. <laughs> but once it gets scabby, it's hard to not pick at it, bro. Once it's scabby, you're like, oh man, I want to no, scratch it. You gotta do it like off. the black women and just pat that shit. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's no a good. itch. <laughs> if only I've been put a wig more on black it. women in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what about this? You meet some ladies at the open mic, maybe? I uh, I have indeed, yes. I uh, don't I don't like to do it though. Oh, you don't want to shit where you eat. Exactly. Now, I, now yeah. you burned this mic. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No. Now. Yeah. Damn. Sometimes artistic ladies can be a little cuckoo too. You know. That's, right, it's but the fun cuckoo. Right, but then they're yeah, they're sometimes. the they're, <laughs> they're the ones that gas you up. They're mm. like, this song is beautiful. I love it when you said this. Like they're like, mm. bro. Whenever a woman would be like, I love this song. I like this line. I'd be like. I've met my soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She this gets it, but she might just be saying that to like make you feel good. Yep. I mean, she might not even mean it. Mm. That would suck if she didn't mean it. Just yeah. like, right. I Bro, would prefer it if you get every every time anybody's told me they like a song I make, I don't believe it. <laughs> Unless it's my boy right here because he keeps it a hundred. 
he'll be like, yo, this right here is nothing. Uh. You should probably just shove it to the side. Yeah, don't keep that song alive. Mm. David literally just got good at rapping like <laughs> six months ago. I asked, how did it happen now? He's got some actual skills. I can't believe that I wasted so much time in the past to see. Wasted my time in the passage. For real. I'm doing good, now I laugh at you. I'm cooking with the spatula. Damn. I'm feeling like SpongeBob. Uh, it hurts when he says it because it's true. <laughs> the shit from back in 2022 uh, was like some real doo doo. But you know, uh, uh, one flew over the cuckoo. <laughs> he went from doo doo to doing the truest stuff that you could ever do, dude. And that's the, you know, what it the is it? True. And yeah. I, did. I already <laughs> said true, unfortunately. <laughs> Bro, we, we put out a fucking, we put out like three projects and he was just enduring me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's rough. Well, no, our projects were good mm. because you were heavily involved in them. <laughs> yeah. He'd be like, "Don't say that." <laughs> uh, I I used to blame it on uh, not speaking English well enough, which I still stand by. Twenty percent of my uh, fails failures at rap were that I was literally a foreigner, and my English is better now. I speak better. I was an ESL. Give me a break. <laughs> I remember this uh, this one time, David and I had like literally just been rapping together for like a couple of months. This was maybe ten years ago, and we were hanging out at a pool, and one of David's friends was there, and he was very impressed at our raps, and we could we couldn't freestyle at the time. But David was like, "I can freestyle, but only in Spanish." <laughs> and then he pro- yeah. he proceeds to deliver the most obviously pre written <laughs> Spanish bars I've ever heard. Uh, no dude i'm a fake ass bitch it is what it is you know what i'm saying i've grown and evolved since my my college years when we met too it was just a different time like the the people that we were then if they met us now they probably wouldn't like us they'd be like you guys are mean that's how it should be though that that growth and evolution yeah i I don't you say that david but i kind of they might say that about you i think people would like me (laughs) yeah you know he he believes in himself it's 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 what's important well, I also used to be like way, I, I used to be kind of prudent mm. and like the goody, more of like a goody two shoes kind of dude. So in, I in almost feel aspects, like, though? well, I mean, it was, we, we met under like religious uh, con, mm. con, uh, circumstances. Yeah, like yeah. we went to a Christian school together and we both had religious backgrounds. Um, and I was kind of like, you know, I feared hell and mm. Jesus. And I, I felt guilty after jerking off. Like I was that kind of guy. <laughs> mm. So I think that. I think that a lot of, and I see it, like a lot of people who I knew back then almost like me more now. <laughs> Mellowed out a bit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's because they went through the same experience too, and so they're like, everybody feels free now. Like they're in that. Well, possibly, yeah. possibly. And I also was pretty judgy too, so I might have, you know, said some shit to them at one point, like, don't swear. <laughs> Maybe the most judgy people, though. Well, I think the, the longer you're religious, the more you become flexible with your beliefs. Like the longer you have to hold on to this thing, the more you learn how to make compromises to make it work. You know what I'm saying? You're like, all right, if I'm going to stick with this. It's got to be okay that my brother's daughter is gay and that she's marrying a fucking black woman. and you know, Which you can't do. You got to disown that brother <laughs> and, and their daughter. <laughs> disown the brother. You have to. If you want to maintain your position in God's eyes, that's, it seems it's like also that's weird a no-brainer. Every time you hang out with them, you, they, they just, you're just wearing a sign on your forehead that says, I believe you're going to hell, but we're which, still which hanging. You don't, you, you yeah. don't have to show up wearing that sign, but, for, <laughs> but you already wrote it out and you put you put it on a hat, so yeah, you yeah. might as well wear it. No, I grew up Jehovah's Witness and like all no those kids. Way. That's crazier. worse. Yeah. That's worse. Yeah, I mean, I was I'm like one generation removed, so I wasn't like fully invested oh, in okay. it like did, my parents were. But like they got to, kicked out the church for you like. You have to knock on any doors. I used to love that shit. Wow, ah. I used to love. It's like. Because they send the cute ass kid in there. I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm like, I just like talking to the people. <laughs> Man, I had a, I just recently had a JW experience. Well, not really. Some backstory. Uh, I randomly was privy to like two car break ins out down near the Pike uh, outlets, which is like a couple of blocks away while I was at work uh, f- filming some dog training stuff. And one of the guys was just in the car still. And I, it was like, one of the my coworkers' cars and I'm the only person there <laughs> and I'm like shit like I literally I have to confront this guy I, and you didn't beat his ass 
Well, I'm not like <laughs> I'm not trained in fighting in any way, shape, or form. But I did fucking open the door and tell him to get the fuck out of the car, and like I was yelling at him, and he. Like I think I could have beat his ass if it came to that. You, you, had, you went in there with some confidence. There was a. Here's the thing. There was a part of me that was like, okay, I might get stabbed right now and die. But if I don't do this for the rest of my life, I'm gonna think about how I didn't <laughs> yeah, help out my yeah. friend and stop someone from robbing her car or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck it. I it's I'll die for to not have to <laughs> experience that regret. <laughs> So I opened that door and I was like, get the fuck out you grimy whore And he got on his bike and left And he didn't even commit any theft Yeah, I stopped him before he took off then, uh Damn, I was chillin' blowin' endo uh. Saw some homeless dude break my homie's window Uh, so I pulled up to have to confront And yeah, he was in the back, not the front He's in the back, not the front Nope Told him get out, he start acting tough Whoa. Got a slap on my hat to get rough Most times I ain't even that tough mm, I wish I had my freaking gat on me <laughs> I would've fucking shoved it in his face And made him strip that day <laughs> Make him question his manhood I would've been like, dude, what's good? I would've been like lifting up my shirt, showing it uh, And being like, yeah, I'm so legit <laughs> But anyway, that it randomly <laughs> that that strip that, that <laughs> damn that's, that's gangster as fuck that <laughs> that one little confrontation kind of gave me like a little confidence boost for the rest of the week because i was like damn i did that shit that was cool um and then i'm like walking home and i see some jw's knocking on a door and in my head i was like i should just tell them to <laughs> Fuck out of here! I can just be like, "Yo, you quit bothering those folks. Get a life, you fucking losers!" But Don't I, you see that sign that says "No soliciting"? <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't. But I, but the fact that I thought of it, you know, it means that but I'm a the, the confident intention guy. was there. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's a hate crime. You yeah. might be right. <laughs> I, I they're, a that. they're a protected group. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I, just, I think I feel like you should be allowed to hate crime in religious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, the, you chose to be religious. Like hate, hate crime should only be relative to race and maybe sexual identity. Once it gets or, into yeah. the religion stuff, I'm like, come on. I mean, you don't. That's all the beefs, dude. That, that, that is all the right. beefs. Well, of the it's world. like you can't. Like, uh, if, if I was to say something hateful about Muslims, people are going to assume that I hate, like, Arab people or whatever, but that's not the case. Yeah. Obviously. Right. Yeah. I yeah. love this man with all my heart. <laughs> that's like a, a bad thing. You can't like draw him, animate him, like any of that shit. Like Islamophobia. That's, yeah, that shit's crazy. It's a thing. Well, I mean, mate, what if? Uh, I wonder if he <laughs> was, he's just a real ugly ass dude, and and so they just don't want people to draw him. Nobody <laughs> knows. <laughs> nobody knows what that fool looks like. Everybody knows. I what mean, they, I could guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. They draw him. He's smoking a cigarette. <laughs> He's, he's got, got one of those curved blades yeah, from Aladdin. Yeah. He's got a nice shirt unbuttoned down to here. <laughs> he literally just is, looks like Aladdin. Yeah, yeah. Someone, <laughs> someone just drew Aladdin. You're like, is this Muhammad? I thought that was the same story. <laughs> I, I'm just imagining like a New York cab driver as Muhammad. <laughs> there well, are plenty named Muhammad, though. Probably looked like Jesus. Damn. They, they probably had snap for that. Some, a black man. They probably had uh, some similarities. <laughs> Let them know. Oh, I just I just thought about this um, because of of Jesus. Did you did you see the trailer for the new Netflix animated Good Times reboot? Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. yeah that was a little rough. That, that was, was rough. that like broke my brain yeah. the first time I watched it. Um, but there was that. There's a part in the trailer where um, where the, I guess the mom is like praying to Black Jesus. Oof. And but he's. He's busy playing Madden, which, <laughs> which is funny in concept. Yeah, which <laughs> technically hilarious. Yep, yeah. <laughs> technically. But it, what what ruined that joke for me was he picks up the phone and he's like, "New phone, who dis?" And I'm like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, see, that's oh, where it goes. You know, that's right? where all like the wittiness and yeah. like the clever all. So it could have been. It, all goes it could have been hella funny, but it, it sucks. It, I mean, the trailer is racist as hell because <laughs> like, yeah. they're going for like boondocks x they're and trying like and that was a crazy ass show the boondocks it's amazing definitely Classic. pushed the boundaries of racial humor but it was never like they never 
were overtly displaying bad aspects of black culture. You know what I mean? It was like That's they were, not there true was at like all. well there was like commentary on it. You know what I mean? True. Whereas true, this true. this trailer that I got for, for the fucking Good Times animated show. If you think about the the original show Good Times that mm. they're that they're going off of, it was like created to show like positive imagery in black communities. You know what I mean? That that, that was like the whole purpose of that show. So they're they're literally making it the opposite. It's like a literal 180 degree turn. Like, it's kind of wild. That's like capitalism in the fucking no, Nef- all the media and shit. And Netflix is desperate, bro. They're all desperate to just make something. You know, they're putting out like a fucking comedy special a week. How much comedy do we need? It's a lot of comedy. A lot of people are ass. That shit is No, no, but it's also playing. just like there there's this endless hole of despair that everybody's just consuming whatever. Like I think uh Netflix, Hulu, HBO, they're all like, "All right. This is like their social media." And they're posting shit and hoping it goes viral. It's literally what they're doing. They're like, "All right. I post this show, everybody loves it." And then we got a hit. Boom. All right. We got to do another one. See if it goes viral. And they're just like throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. You know, what's interesting. You brought, you, shit to stick to. you brought up Boondocks. And uh, I know that Slink Johnson was involved with Boondocks. And he's a big part of the Good Times animated show, too. So it's just a little weird, honestly. Yo, that fucking trailer made me want to pee. I had to get up and leave. I had to take my headphones off and have a reprieve. Oh, goddamn. Fuck that shit. Yeah, fuck I it. ain't watching good time. Nah, nah. I'm just out here late night nah. writing good rhymes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to make sure the whole hood shine. Oh, whoa. I'm going to make it not like the good times. Oh, yeah, fuck good times. Me, I'm watching the boondocks. <laughs> yeah, chilling on the furniture, smoking some moon rocks. Damn. Yeah, that's the first time I heard about the itis. <laughs> uh, then at the doctor, I got gingivitis. <laughs> Hanging out with Gramps and with Huey Man. Yo, shout out Regina King. That voice is flame. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Classic. That's so classic. Yeah, the the video of her in the recording studio doing the voices is so fun. <laughs> I never knew. I never knew. Actually, yeah. th- that's a class of, of content that is perfect. Footage of people recording popular animated audio that you oh, recognize bro the, the, the guys doing the baby back ribs oh uh, yeah. commercial <laughs> yeah dude or like the south park one where oh, he's yep. doing the yeah, asian bill, voice bill hater <laughs> no and you're like you're seeing them in there laughing and you're just like this is the best dude you rolled this like a champ this is <laughs> i mean you could you could sell this to some white people for fucking three hundred dollars oh it's 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 organic yeah. And, you know, made, Gold flakes in yeah, yeah, made it. by an indigenous man. <laughs> it, it, it seems like that blunt would have like an Australian accent. Yeah. <laughs> so it's what's a, a damn alligator hoove? What's a what's a game plan? You said you have a you're you're building the catalog. Why not build? I know the you've cat- been making some beats. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, you sir. should send us some beats, dude. Oh, fuck yeah, I would I would love to. I I thought about it. Shout out shout out Rakim from Scuddy Records last week. He sent us some beats. And then I literally made a song on one of them the other day, and it's out. It, I mean, it's kind of serious, but the shit goes kind of hard. And Fuck then yeah. we're gonna drop it next week. What's it about? Oh, yeah. It's about not having gone home in a while. Mm. See, that's a good relatable topic. That's fire. Yeah, I like that song. Um, Wax has that song "Scumbag," which <laughs> is kind of about that. The less I see my family, <laughs> the more of a fucking scumbag <laughs> I become. That's a good track. I didn't hear that one, but I like how that hooks up. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's cool. But yeah, dude. Uh, so you're you're building the catalog, but you're not dropping it. Nope, I'm not dropping nothing yet because I I I feel like it's a void, and I'm really like inspired by like Russ and the way he just his approach to music. The song a week thing. The the song a week thing. The uh, consistency of it all, and just building the catalog and like whatever but catches he, catches. But he even. released it. That that is true. So you're trying to just like get enough to where you can. Have a pile and start dropping them once a week, or yeah, I want to stash because I don't want to ever be in the position where I'm like I feel forced to make a song for well, a situation. But what about this? Like, because I'm doing a song a week, but mm. I mean I do it for like four weeks mm. and then I fall off, and then I do one, and then I fall. You know what I'm saying? Like I have a pretty good rut, so I've been sticking to it for a couple of weeks. And there's it's true that you don't want to be rushed, mm. but there's also something about being a fucking professional. 
Mm -hmm. and and like having the skill of like i sit down and no matter what day it is no matter how i feel i crank out a song i do my best and then i put it out and then each time you show up your baseline is a little bit higher Mm -hmm. like i obviously sucked a really long time and now i suck less and i feel like it's because i think the freestyling helps too but also i think it's it's like just Given it like you have you have four hours to take an exam. We we might all do better on the exam if we have fucking three weeks to take it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But if you like fucking take a bunch of exams, you're eventually better at taking exams within the time frame. So I that's just my mindset. No, it, ma- it makes sense. And I feel like it's the right mindset to have. Like, I don't think my mindset about it is like the best way, even like the healthiest way. But it's just. I feel like I just own my own journey in the way I have gone about it. Because I've been doing this shit for like seven years now. That's not, yeah, that's a, that's a while. And I'm like, no no songs out. I'm just fucking performing, getting, just building, building. Because I'm like, I, I am a perfectionist. I'm starting to get out of it because it's like, when you say you're a perfectionist, it's like, then you got to produce something perfect. And what's really perfect? Well, it's, it's also, true. Or <laughs> you, you set a, uh, an unreasonable bar for yourself. Yeah, I'm like, oh, per- perfect is the bar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah like so that, then, so the, then you just don't put anything out. Yeah, yeah. Also, to you, something's perfect. To some person who uh, finds your music, they don't know shit. They, if it connects with them, it connects with them. Like, they're not paying attention to the fact that, like, this ad lib is on the wrong bar. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, I say you just start putting shit out, dog. And there is beauty in the imperfection. I I am starting to like be more uh intentional with music and like especially with making the beats too. It's just completely opened my ear to like I listen to music completely differently now. Like that shit is and I only started in January. Like that shit is crazy. It's making beats. Yeah, yeah. Making beats is cool. It's hard. It takes yes. a while. He's on Ableton too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, sick, dude. Yeah. I'm on Ableton boy too. Yeah. Ableton's fire. You want splice? Splice. Right, track I, just, I just fucking I'm like, I'll do my best with splice. It sounds fire. Yo, I need a splice of cake. Uh, <laughs> Nice, I ate, <laughs> now I'm feeling great For like eight minutes, then I gotta go to sleep The beats, day. When I hear Splice, I think of that movie That's nice with Adrian Brody And he uh. has to bang an alien that he created And then it turns into a man And man, that shit's insane, shit <laughs> uh. I used to cook with the spice Now I cook on Splice oh. I wish I had a head full of lies Damn. so I could ditch for tonight. Scrolling through splice for the hi hats and snares. Mm. Put my hair down, you know I don't care. Yo. About to grab the fucking splash from over there <laughs> and then fade it out. Who cares? Picture me, Adrian Brody, clapping <laughs> his cheeks. This alien creature I had to meet. I made it with my wife, but I found it so attractive, you see. And then it turned into a man, and I am not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I haven't seen that. That, movie, that movie's crazy. Are you fucking an alien? That like, oh, sounds shit. awesome, dude. Yeah, I, dude. Th- I thought you were talking about uh, Split, where uh, the dude was all crazy a little bit. But I do, that's a good movie, too. I'm not going to lie. I fuck with Split. I uh, thought you were talking about it the whole time. James, and I was like, James yeah. McAvoy. Yeah. <laughs> it does start with SPLI. So you're, oh, yeah, you're right. fairly close. That's, Honest and, mistake. And <laughs> <laughs> no, that um, it's like Adrian Brody and his wife are scientists, and they like create this humanoid hybrid thing and then adrian brody fucks it and then it <laughs> and then it turns into a man and uh, it, it's just a it's a weird fucking movie for that's sure. science bro we're all women yeah. first i'm pretty sure mm. in the womb you're a woman and then you grow a dick i do think that, that i think that had something to do with it yeah, yeah. yep it's a spectrum <laughs> i'm on the estrogen spectrum <laughs> I, I only I'm like ten rhymes ten percent. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> Do you know the definition of the word esoteric? Nah. Why? I I feel like I've heard you say it before. You've never heard me say esoteric. I learned the meaning yesterday, but I I can't remember right now. I do feel like I could use it. Oh, in a sentence. Properly. I got. Here's the meaning. Here's the meaning. It means information that's being discussed that only applies to a certain few. So if we're having a conversation on the podcast. And it's about a friend of ours that we had in college. The podcast has become very esoteric because it's insider information. It could also be if we're talking mm. about something very niche, 
like if we were if we were talking about open mics, mm. it might be esoteric because other only people. only people who care about open mics might or know about open mics might. Uh, Welcome to the vocabulary word. podcast. So why did you bring up esoteric? I did a little vocab exercise mm. yesterday and learned the word. Oh. You do vocab exercises. Well, when I first got with my girl, I had this little vocab book, and we mm. used to do vocab together. So whenever we we have a like a, a interesting night, we're like. Just oh, English is your book. second language. Okay, that, ma- that makes. Well, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> fucking disabled. <laughs> I, it's my, she's teaching him all these <laughs> yeah, yeah. words. I, I forgot it's, you still are learning. You it's know. become my first language <laughs> yeah. now. It was my second language. <laughs> no, like you know way more words than I do. I, I don't know. Maybe it, it's it, we. We don't have to compete about. I know, it. Dude, <laughs> Esoteric is big, bro. No, dude, I'm well, intimidated. You know, you know, yo, co- that competition shit is in the air, yo. Cole, Cole, mm-hmm. Disson, Kendrick, and shit. Oh, dude, I'm it's, interested in that. That's dude. Did you hear? Um, uh, is it seven minute drill? Seven minute drill, bro. He comes in. I just love that. But this was pretty weak, though. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and he, also, he didn't th- even give that nigga props for five seconds. <laughs> it's, it's just weird that they they like um, uh, they they're trying to be super discreet with the disses. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then like Kendrick disses him like on one verse every three years or some shit. Mm. Like it's like a very but it's like the whole thing was brought on. It, to my understanding, and I might be wrong, but if if I'm not mistaken, J. Cole and Drake did a song together. Yeah. And, First person shooter. Yeah. And, then, and, and and J. Cole starts talking about the big three on the mm-hmm. song and that it's him, Kendrick, and Drake. And I guess that like so technically he doesn't ever diss he Kendrick. compliments him. No, he does. But one, does. Could, one could argue that he disses him by saying that you're as good a rapper as me and Drake, whereas Kendrick himself... No, he had a was, line about big steppers. He, he, he oh, was what dissing. was the... He knew he, knew he was dissing. Oh, what was the line about big... I, I must have missed that one. I don't remember the exact line. Oh, okay, okay. But, but yeah, he was talking about... He, he referenced the line. I, he I, I, he I, said I, he, was, he mentioned the big three. He felt like Muhammad Ali. It was like... I was listening to it like if I'm Kendrick, I, like I just wish I heard it with Kendrick in the room to just look at his face like... Cause that, it was like a little, it was a little corny too. It, he's always corny. I'm, like I think J Cole has like one really good album, and then other than that, I just what? I don't. Nah, really but he care. got bars, dude. Come on, no, he's he does a- obviously. But I do think that there is once once you know once J. Cole you're has getting arguably little, the greatest bar ever. Which is what he said. No Bill Cosby shit. But if niggas is sleeping, then fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible. That's, that's that is pretty good. Incredible. No, and he has. And he, he has a lot of those, dude, and it's also I think you're talking about it from a music perspective, where it's like well, I just really like the that Born Sinner album. I'm sure a, all of his albums are fine. No, no just, yeah, Born Sinner so spoke Born to Sinner me. Was I the fuck album with that. So you weren't even talking about Forest Hills Drive because that's like nah, the main. I don't, I don't really I, fuck with Forest. I, Hills I, Hills no, I really, yeah, I really okay. like, I really like Forest Hills Drive. Mm. Honestly, that's when I really got into mm. J Cole, and it's it's just a matter of him becoming more popular. And then being a part of just the conversation and then integrating himself in the conversation. Like he's very vocal mm-hmm. and then he has the Dreamville thing. So like I think that takes away from the artistry. Like mm-hmm. once you're more involved, you kind of show your hand a little bit more. Whereas Kendrick's like back here making classics and then he dips. Mm-hmm. And he's just like so like that lack of involvement. Yo, talking about hip hop and being fucking into it is not super cool when it comes to being hip hop yo yeah you know my brain rot i mean honestly i respect all of these artists but probably kendrick would be the best one in my opinion and that's just how it is he's one of the greatest under the sun yo we talking about hip hop and who's at the tip top which album and which flop either way i'm a flip flop yo I only make classics, uh, and my girlfriend is bad shit. Yeah. That's why my music's so good, and yo. thank God I came up in the hood. <laughs> That's right, yo. To pimp a butterfly, I bump that shit all night. Yo. That's a cool album, and I can't really think of one that J. Cole does. That is the same, bruh, with the same uh, fucking conceptua. Man, we gotta make these beats longer, yo. I wanna rap. Here, here's a, here's I'm a, like, I'll be just getting we made, it. If we made them longer, we wouldn't be able to clip anything. Fair, <laughs> fair, fair. Fucking two minutes 30. Now Instagram's like cutting us oh off. God. No, but like, well, let's have a site for Kendrick <laughs> is, I'm down. Kendrick is like the fucking Lord of the Rings movies. You know, you watch them once a year, once every other year, and it's classic. Mm. 
J. Cole is fucking like Seinfeld or like a, <laughs> he's like a TV show. Awful. Like you could put it on and it always bangs. And Seinfeld's like, great. That's what I'm it's saying. So it's like yeah. it, they are both great. It, so it's like it's two different things in my opinion. J. Cole is probably more marketable and, and more like of a career kind of guy. And then Drake is the love is blind. Yeah. <laughs> Drake is Drake reality. is the reality yeah. show that you binge and yep. sort of feel bad about, but yep. you still watch it still all the time. And it yeah. always goes viral. And the baddies love it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> dude, I need to get jacked like Drake, bro. That dude is so big. He's he's shown some pics where he's he's fucking big. Oh, we were just talking about Regina. <laughs> Whoa! I, I was just watching <laughs> Regina about the video. Regina King in this uh, in this show called The Leftovers on HBO, and the main actor in this show, his name is Justin Thoreau, but he's like distractingly built. Uh, like, like, <laughs> The whole time, you're like, looking at his muscles. No, it's, I swear to God, <laughs> it's it, talking about it. It's yeah. one of those things where even in the show they talk about how he's the the this hot cop, and I'm like, okay, so it's a part of his character, character mm. that he's supposed to be really hot. Mm. But then also, I mean, let me just pull up a photo of Justin. Thoreau, okay, here we go. And you, yeah. you tell me yeah, that this look? dude isn't like an attractive ass man. <laughs> There is a level of Jack that's socially inconvenient. It's like, wait, now everything's about me being Jack. Like, I, I, I saw there. this photo of him walking around with his girlfriend, and he, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. I could I'm, take him. <laughs> he's he's pretty jacked, yeah. Give me, a, give me one year. I one mean, year of commitment, I got him. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm going for. That's, I need. I need to know Justin's routine. I need to to be. I need to be as thorough as thorough. Uh, <laughs> you know, he might so be. Got, he might be snuffer. injecting some help. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You're that, probably right. These Hollywood guys. Shit. These Hollywood guys. You said they, that much nicer than I was about to. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you said it that way. My intrusive thoughts was <laughs> probably <laughs> sticking needles in his ass. Yeah. You're right. No, you're right. I feel like after you turn like 35, that's kind of the only way that's even possible to get built Look at, at the all. the fucking rock, yo. Yeah. I mean, the I rock mean, is taken that, that dude so is much shit. Mostly roids. Yeah. <laughs> he's more roid than man at this point. That's the thing when you but he's also like training like crazy, dude. Like he he's not, you know, like these dudes who take roids, they still bust their ass in the gym. Yeah, yeah. No. So it's like it, you can you can clown on them for taking roids, but then I don't have that fucking work ethic. Hey, I wasn't clowning on him. Yeah, I'll and, take and some also, roids. also the roids are what is l allowing them to be so crazy at the gym. I think because if you're not on steroids, you can only you, you max just pent up, you <laughs> max out, and then you're too tired to do anything <laughs> else. But with those, you know, it's basically just like pre workout that you can put in your bloodstream immediately. You know, imagine taking roids and then just going to work. <laughs> just, yeah, that would, but there, not working out. There's plenty. Just... There's plenty of these forty year old dudes. They take testosterone replacement therapy. And then they're just skinny or fat or whatever. Like they don't do anything other than take the injection just to boost their shit, and they still don't fucking do the shit. It's um, so I, just, that's a waste of TRT. That's what I'm saying. Dude. Like <laughs> you, you're fucking taking juice, and then you're not getting jacked. You're, It'd I've, be cool if like when you, at the moment that you took it, if you like felt a rush. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> just like like heroin. All right, let's do this. <laughs> It's funny how easy it is to actually get steroids. There's fucking websites that you could just get it shipped to your house. You guys know all the websites. Yeah, you, you go. It's like rubmaps.com. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning so no, much. No, no. There's today. literally you could go on a site right now, get steroids, order it, and have it shipped to your house. You have to pay with like Bitcoin or some shit. But oh, because you're buying yeah. it from like the Silk Road or something. <laughs> yeah. they, they, it has to be an untraceable payment method. It sounds like you've been on the dark web. Before. I've, you know, I've, I've visited some sites. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever been on the dark web? I haven't. I am interested. I don't think I've been on the dark web. I went web. one time in high school because a friend of mine knew how to get it. He knew how to like download the Tor browser mm -hmm. and like hide his IP and shit like that. So we had like a an evening of just going on the dark web at his house, like me and a couple other friends. And he put his computer on his big screen TV and... Good lord! Like, like there's, it, there's like it's basically like Amazon.com, but you could find like guns and shits and like <laughs> mushrooms. We we went to a hitman website where if okay. we had the Bitcoin, we could hire a guy to kill someone. That's crazy. And there was just links to child pornography websites as well, which obviously we didn't go to. But <laughs> if we did, we were also underage. So what? Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> we were also minors. Are minors can minors look at child porn? Is that okay, folks? Yeah, you're right. That's, that's, <laughs> leave it in the car. <laughs> it's, gonna, 
It's an important question. <laughs> it's got to be slightly less bad, yeah, right? Us, no. <laughs> it's definitely, it doesn't feel as bad. No, it was, that was like, because um, did you guys ever like go to oh, oh, like Omegle parties or whatever in high school? That shit was fun as fuck. <laughs> you know, uh, what, what is that? I don't know what that is. Omegle mm-hmm. was like chat roulette or yep. whatever, and you would just, uh, you and a bunch of dudes, I guess, would... Try to find someone who would show them, their, show you their titties or whatever. Oh, sure. But, and but ninety percent of it, it was just other dudes doing the same thing you were yeah, doing, yeah. Um, just but looking was, at each other. Like. It was always kind of fun, and then ran. And of course, like every ten hits, you would just it would be some old man trying to you know find Whoa. some young girl yeah. or whatever. It was Damn. yeah, it was a dark place it, on the internet. It'd be fun to just cuss out the stranger. Just randomly, just like you fucking old pervert. <laughs> just, just, just fucking cuss them out. There's stories. a site like that now that I see people making content with, like they random people pop up on your screen, and then people will do like a, a funny video or they'll rap or they'll do some shit. You know what I'm talking about? No, TikTok. No, it's not TikTok. <laughs> it's it's like live. Like you you go on this like you're on a webcam, and then a random person pops up, and you either talk shit or whatever. But these dudes be recording it, and then they like fucking perform or all that shit is weird to me yeah like I, I, streaming and shit I, I just don't understand well, i mean like i i get the appeal but it's no not stream, for streaming me. is weird no i can't yeah. i can't watch a stream that's uh, insane it's it, yeah like watch the clips like yeah the normal the, one, <laughs> once it's clipped yeah, yeah. when it's clipped <laughs> afterwards sometimes i'll watch a stream mm-hmm. um but it, it is like it, it it just goes to show that there exists that like bizarre level of fandom to where they are so into this dude and 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 what he has to say that it's they're tuning in for the what is he gonna say next? Or that if it's a hot thing. chick, I get it. You're trying to hang out with this chick, maybe that that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, that's you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> it, it's it's funny because like my mindset would be I would want to be getting something out of this stream. Like they would be talking about shit that I care about. And I wouldn't imagine that would happen in the scenario you just presented. But I guarantee yeah, watching, you, <laughs> watching some young rich kid, <laughs> right? <laughs> but but that is more so where people find their success for sure. No, yeah, it's hot, hot girls. Hot. Hot girls are are good for the camera. You you yeah you just get on and you, <laughs> you play Fortnite and have your titties out. Basically. Oh yeah, or have them out a little bit at least. <laughs> give, us, give us something. I saw one clip on Twitter. It was somebody who like they made their ass like a green screen, oh. and so the game was on their ass. Hell but yeah! Were, but yeah, it was it was crazy. Ass screen. Yeah, I was, I was like, that's creative. God bless that woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for her. Doing important work. Yeah. Uh, where can where can people find you or keep an eye on what you're doing? Uh, it will be is that the Messiah on Instagram? I S T H A T the Messiah. Oh a- hell yeah! A- anything you're working on that people should keep an eye out for, or something, or you just music, poetry events. I got like my first feature of the year on Monday. It's a. Uh, I mean, I know it's coming out after, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm all, I'm always outside doing events. Hell yeah! I swear, uh, when I first followed you, was your Instagram account private? That was my spam account. That was the wrong account. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, gonna... yeah, no, it was private. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, his, his account is not private, yeah, folks. No. You can find him. It, and that, that's Messiah for President, right? Or is no, that's the second. That's one. the spe- the Messiah yeah. for President. Yeah, you, gotta bleep, you gotta bleep that one. Okay. No, no. I'm just... I gotta. I actually have to follow you on your real account. <laughs> the, I'm the, pretty sure the that... link is in the description. So if you want to follow him, go to link in the description. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Fucking go to patreon.com forward slash Dome and Banfomania. Gonna send you some stickers if you sign up. Hell yeah, thanks for coming through on the, yeah. the 200th episode, y'all. <laughs> and uh, just throw it in bye. at the end. <laughs> uh, just kidding, we're back because we didn't uh, shout out the producers. Yeah, what the fuck? We're just going to do that real these quick. Niggas. All right, first one was Dread by Lethal Needle. Woo-wee. Then it was Medieval by Chub Beats. Woo. Then it was Habits by Man Yell. Woo. Then it was Cloud Nine by That Kid Goron. Damn. Then Above the Clouds by Alex Factor. That was a good one. Cuckoo by Nigma. I remember that. My one. nigga. I like Nigma. My Nigma. <laughs> <laughs> too close. Too close. <laughs> <laughs> then it was Emerald by Piper Beats. <laughs> High Demand by Louise. Ooh. Tell the Story by Bailey Daniel. I remember that. Caroline by Bean. That one was hot. Triumph by Reezy Beats. Love that one. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks, guys. Great beat selection. Thank you.